Hi guys, this is Pestilli and welcome to another Scary Free Tarkov video. Today I am talking about the Tarkov TV live on the 14th of November, hosted by Nikita and Demirka. We're going to be covering everything that was in the Escape for Tarkov TV live show. And uh, without further ado, let's crack straight into it. So first up, there was five drop codes. I'll get them up on the screen for you right now, but... If you are quick and fast, you might be able to still be able to claim them. So first up, it was ground zero, all one word. I am mighty, all one word. Armor plates, all one word. Rich and expensive, all one word. And left hand, head eyes, all one word. So make sure you do them all in capitals. You can do that via the launcher and you'll be able to claim some of the items. The first one was an injector case. And uh, I don't actually know what the, the rest of them are. But people are saying there was some good stuff. All right, so they currently have two big ongoing tasks. The first one being uh, the arena closed beta release the way that's going to work is at the start of december sometime in the first half of december they're going to start releasing closed beta access the people that have purchased it via getting the eod account or via purchasing arena separately uh the earliest people to sign up for the arena will be the first ones to get access and then they're going to do like a rolling release so then it doesn't get overloaded uh on the service the next patch they're working on is their major patch which will include a wipe around new year's being patch 0.14 now i'll go through the patch first and then we'll go through the arena stuff so starting off with the patch 0.14 they're going to implement their new matchmaking system it's meant to be working faster so then that way people can uh, load into a raid faster and there won't be so much matching time um, hopefully this will actually just mostly focus on the loading time because i feel like the matching isn't the issue it's when people are actually loading the map and then once they do match with people they've got to load the loot so if they could tighten that up it would actually save a lot of time uh, when I did a cap of speed run for five days, we worked out that one day of that whole five days was actually loading into raid. So that's funny how much of your life, if you do quick raids, you spend loading into raid. There's also going to be a new launcher released uh, sometime before the end of the year, which will also have a separate game to select from. So you'll have the Escape from Tarkov game and then the Arena game to pick from in the launcher. The Unity patch, they were originally going to Unity 2021. Now they are skipping that and they're going to Unity 2023. Uh, they reckon this will have less bugs, less issues, and so they moved it to sometime next year. And uh, let's just say that, you know, this is pretty typical that they've pushed back Unity patches quite often. And yeah, one day we will finally have our full game with the greatest of everything. Next thing with the major wipe patch at the start of the uh, new year or at the end of this year is they're adding a new location called Ground Zero. This is only going to be available for your PMC. Uh, below level 15 or 20 they haven't decided what yet um, and you will not be able to go into that map before uh, sorry after you reach that level uh, but you will still be able to scav into that area it's going to be starting from like a destroyed building within the terror group headquarters and it's technically where you're meant to start escape from tarkov like if you were to play it as a as a campaign the law starts from there it's going to be limited to the specific levels however as a scav player, you'll be able to go in there at any level. So, you know, you could have a level 60 PMC, but you'll be able to scav in there still and get a part of that. The loot in there will not be as good as the rest of the other maps. It's more of like meant to be aimed to be a starting zone for people to learn the game, kind of like a tutorial area, I guess. Um, and it will be available in patch 0.14. Nikita set extra focus on the fact that you should be using the SD option for low quality textures in Streets of Tarkov if you have RAM issues. And uh, they said that this new Ground Zero area will also be opportunity for you to experience the Streets of Tarkov map if you don't have the, uh, the ability or the NASA PC to run through the bigger map. All right, next up for Streets of Tarkov, they have added a fair few new things. First up being the BTR will be added to the map. That's a BTR that will patrol around the map. You'll be able to use it to transport around the area, uh, potentially be an extract, and also be able to extract loot once per raid. So if you run up to the actual btr you're meant to be able to like fill it up for loot and it will take that loot away from you so that is going to be available in the actual next white patch uh, the new boss it sounded like he said quanti uh he said there's no easy translation from russian but i'm sure you guys will know it we'll chuck it in the comments if you do uh, but that's going to be the new boss and there's going to be new indoor areas so i don't think there's going to be an actual expansion to the map as in the map's going to be larger like footprint on the ground i just think they're going to make it so more buildings will be able to be uh, accessible and you'll be able to go into more rooms and and find more locations within the actual streets of Tarkov. however the shoreline map will get its expansions and, and an update to the actual shoreline map itself he had no video or footage for that and no information on it yet but um they are doing a shoreline update with the uh, upcoming patch vaulting will be added to the game they added they showed a video of the vaulting uh he said almost all obstacles will be have the option to vault over uh and some ob objects will still need to be tweaked 
so there's no major issues. But yeah, it's pretty much like a step over for, for lower and then like a bit of a like a, a small hip sized vault or like say a railing or something. So you can also jump out of windows. So you won't have to do these weird like jump crouches to go through windows. So it should actually make things a lot easier when it comes to those things. Particularly for newer players trying to get out of window and be quite frustrating. Now, the, the one of the bigger things that we will see, it will have a major impact on actual gameplay will be the armor hit registrations. They've actually made it so the a whole armor is individualized on where the armor plates are. So if you shoot someone in the back, there's an armor plate on the back, it will have durability. There will also be durability on the armor plate to the front. So if you get shot in the back, you can turn around, you'll have full durability on your front plate and they'll be able to be removed and repaired individually. It's going to probably be a bit clunky at first, I imagine. But I think once we get used to it, it'll be a lot easier. I feel like there's going to be two things that will happen from this. Um, certain armors will be completely useless because they won't have much protection on certain parts of the body. Um, so, for example, a slick doesn't really cover a lot of parts of the body, um, which will make the slick less less good. But say the Zabrello 6B43 or whatever, the big, full, chunky body armor will actually be really, really powerful. So, you know, there'll be, there'll be highs and lows with each armor and... and and pros and cons it's meant to be a massive recall rework that's meant to be happening and it's meant to be in that patch as well uh, they're going to start doing testing in-house or, or they've already started doing testing in-house and then they're going to release it for testing on the ets for feedback uh, it's meant to be aimed at doing more realism it, it's just hoping that uh, it'll make it so it's more predictable for the initial firing of ammunition but then that way you'll be able to like control the initial burst of a gun um but he thinks that uh, as usual everyone will complain and say it's trash and they broke the game. They added new blind fires and a left shoulder weapon transition. So you're going to be able to switch your, your firearm over to your left shoulder. So if you're doing a left-handed peek, you'll be able to, uh, you know, expose less of your body when you're actually picking around the corner. It did look really smooth and, and sleek. So we'll hopefully, hopefully uh, have a lot more success with left-handed left peeks from that. Uh, and there's a new blind fire animation. The, the above head one's very similar. Looks pretty much the exact same, but it's more the, the one to the side. It used to kind of just like stick your arms out like that you know, whereas now it kind of like just tilts your arms out a little bit so if you're trying to shoot around a corner without sticking your head out you still can it should be a little bit more accurate i think uh, achievements are going to be added to the wipe at the end of the year it will not achievements will not be reset with each wipe so if you complete any achievements then you will have that permanently uh, and they're going to add more achievements for every wipe then on top of that there's going to be limited edition achievements that will happen during specific events so for example it might be something like, you know, be a part of the Halloween event for 2023. So if you kill, I don't know, the, the Uber Zarachi or whatever his name was during that Halloween event, you'll get an achievement for it. And therefore you'll have that achievement forever. Uh, kind of like a feat of strength, I think, in World of Warcraft. Character stats. So you're actually going to be able to view your friends' uh, profiles on your friends list by the sounds of it. And you'll also be able to look at their favorite weapons and also share their presets. So if you have like favorite presets, you could actually, you know, save your presets and people can and copy your presets so for gunsmith and all that kind of stuff i think it should be really fun uh, a really cool way to like be like hey this is my favorite way of using like a you know an m4 or rd or whatever it is it should make things a lot easier i have like a thousand people on my friends list so people are going to be probing into me like crazy um, but one of the other cool things is you'll be able to look specifically at your pmc stats or your scav stats uh from that profile so you will now just be able to go hey this is what my stats are on my on my pmc and my stats stats on my scav I'm going to actually probe Nikita to see if I can get deaths to PMCs uh, added to the to the kill death stuff as well. Because I think it'd be cool set to have. I've actually asked for it like seven times, but you know, maybe eighth time the charm. As for the hideout, uh, there's going to be a Hall of Fame uh, kind of thing, like location. He wants it so you can like put specific items in that location. So if you get someone's dog tag, you'll be able to hang them up there or, or you know, like maybe find a Pestily Plague mask. You're like, oh, I got this from Pestily. This is, you know, a, a cool item I want to keep. Uh, he also did touch on the fact that uh, hideout pets are coming. He, he, the cat is coming. Not sure when, but yeah, said that it's coming. Uh, as for new guns, there's going to be a 9A-91, which is a 9x39 SMG, and a VSK-94, which is also a 9x39 SMG. Then also they showed the RPD and the RPDN, which is 7.62 by 39 belt fed. So it looked like it had horrific recoil, but he said that that is from the old recoil system, not the new recoil system. There was also the Sig Spear uh, gun added to the game, which could be uh, like a 300 blackout or 7.62 by 51 or 308 or a 556. It comes in multiple variations of ammunition. So I'll have to see which one it is. They're adding the preset magazine ammo loading. So what that means is you're going to be able to go, all right, for my mags, I want to have it so 
the first 25 rounds of a 30 round mag will be you know 762 by 39 bp and then the last five rounds you'll put traces i don't know so then that way when you get to your last five rounds you can go oh yeah i'm about to run out of ammo i need to reload and then ultimately you could also do uh you know like a high pen round a high damage round high pen round high damage round back and forth if you wanted to and save your presets however you want uh, the Lightkeeper services will be added to the game, being the Zarachi support, so he'll protect you on Lighthouse. The Temporary Truce with the Cultus will be added, and also Rogue support, where the Rogues will protect you on Lighthouse. As for new gear, uh, adding two new helmets to the game, customization for some helmets, I think he said the Wendy x -Fil. some new backpacks, new clothing, and new weapon mods. Uh, they're going to be adding new tasks and also rebalance to some of the tasks, and that is pretty much everything that will be in the upcoming patch. As for Arena... Uh, their arena kill cam was implemented and they showed it off during the uh, the playing of arena that they did uh, People will be invited into waves like I said earlier, uh, but it will happen fairly quickly It's not going to take ages to get everyone in It's just that they didn't want to have everyone come have get access to arena and then the servers being crashed for the first 24 hours And then people being like I'm never playing this crappy arena ever again. So um, That's pretty much it. Uh, the first testers will be the ones who purchase EOD first or arena first Closed beta will be released to more people based on these server loads, and they're going to be fixing bugs as they discover them with the release of the closed beta. There will also be an arena tournament at DreamHack Hanover on December 14th, where 16 participants were competing live on stage. So not really too much information on arena right there, but um, we got to see it a little bit more. I don't believe that the initial release of the uh, closed beta arena will have any linking to the actual main game of Escape from Tarkov. I could be wrong, but I don't believe that the uh there's going to be too much of a you know link at the start i think they'll implement that over time as for uh other news there's also twitch rivals being on the 16th of november uh where it's a na based competition but eu uh, participants will also be in there and it'll be up to 50 oh there'll be fifty thousand dollars us price pool also if you haven't bought eod you need to buy it before the end of the year if you want to keep it as the limited edition release of it will happen and it will be no longer purchasable uh via since from the end of the year. If you have already bought it though, you will not lose it. It just means you won't be able to buy it. But my theory is I'll release something else. So I wouldn't trust too much. That is pretty much everything covering the whole Tarkov TV life. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. The Raid series will be back this week. I'm starting filming that today. I've been away overseas in Thailand, being sick and all this other stuff going on and been working on a big event that I'm hosting at the start of December. Not arena based. For other news uh, on the Before Death channel, I'll release my next video tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be a, a bit of a, I don't know, a heart tugger. I don't know how you would. It's gonna be. It's gonna. It's gonna hit the feels. It's. Uh, we've put a lot of time and effort into our content on the Before Death channel, and hopefully you guys are enjoying Parkov as a whole. Uh, I've taken a bit of time off over the last month, but I'm getting back into it as we start approaching a new patch. Um, I usually go pretty hard early on in the wipe, and then get more excited as more as we get closer to the next wipe. So thanks for the uh, getting to this point. If you have already, make sure you like and comment for the YouTube algorithm. It really does go a long way. If you like any YouTube video on Twitch, make sure you like it. Go check out my before death content if you haven't already. Subscribe. And lastly, I'll see you next time.